good evening one and all today we are going to see the 20th lecture uh, in uh, uh, this uh, electric and hybrid vehicle course so this is about uh, energy storage and regeneration this is module number 3 so far we have seen battery we have seen ultra capacitor we have seen ultra speed flywheel and today we are going to see another very important fundamental which is called as regenerative braking so this is another way of energy saving and energy regeneration that we find in case of only electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle for mechanical braking we have seen that it is only wastage of energy uh, because we are only accelerating the vehicle up to a certain uh, speed and then if there comes some traffic there comes some obstacle in front of the vehicle at that time we are actually applying friction force so there is disc brake there is drum brake through that actually we are trying to restrict the rotation of the wheel and by that way actually we are bringing the vehicle to lower speed or sometimes we have to stop the vehicle depending on the situation so mechanical vehicle uh, mechanical braking is totally a wastage of energy actually the energy which we are paying for through the uh, money of petrol or gasoline diesel whatever uh, we are using that petrol to accelerate the vehicle and then because of some obstruction we are bringing the uh, speed down that means we are decelerating the vehicle that means we are actually going against uh, the very uh, notion of acceleration so we are actually directly losing some power or to losing some acceleration uh generated by us uh, in a vehicle electrical braking or uh, regeneration is one way by which we can actually save some energy and we can generate some energy what is the basic of uh, regeneration basic of regeneration we have seen discussed in uh, module number 2 that when the vehicle is going downward at that time uh, the motor which was taking the Uh, energy electrical energy from the battery and which was running the output uh, wheels that uh, dc uh, motor is actually acting as dc generator and instead of taking the energy from vehicle and supplying uh, mechanical energy to the differential or axle what it is doing is uh, whenever the vehicle is going downward at that time the rotation of the tires are actually Uh, making this dc machine at the output in a reverse manner so in that case uh, rotation is taken at the out from the output side and it is converted to electrical energy at the input side of the dc machine so the input and output port actually exchanges whenever the vehicle is going downward because whenever the vehicle is going downward at that time uh, without even uh, giving some energy to the engine vehicle will go downward because the vehicle is in downward slope so in that case uh, most of the energy is actually converted back uh, in the regenerative energy and it actually comes back and charges the battery this is what is the concept of regenerative regeneration and what is regenerative braking whenever we are in the city uh, as many as time we are actually pushing the brake as soon as we are pushing the brake actually the vehicle goes into regeneration mode so more number of times we are pressing the brake uh, during our urban driving or city driving vehicle goes into regeneration mode and it generates electricity so two ways actually we are uh, adding to the existing level of energy electrical energy in case of uh, hybrid or electric vehicle number one whenever we are pushing electrical brake we are actually uh, reducing the current given to the motor because in case of ev the motor actually runs uh, the uh, motor is actually run by the energy taken from the battery so if we are giving less current or less energy to the motor that means we are supplying less so we know that money saving is money generation in the same way whenever we are applying less current to the motor which is driving the vehicle we are actually saving some energy so this is one way of uh, energy generation in case of electric vehicle second way i told you that is whenever you are pushing some brake vehicle is going to regeneration mode the dc motor or dc machine acts as a dc generator so 
the output side rotation gets converted into input side electricity electricity flows back towards the battery and it charges the vehicle so for every braking electrical braking obviously i told you that mechanical braking wastes energy electrical in, uh, electrical braking regenerates the energy so it comes back and charges the battery so there are some critical uh, fundamentals related to regenerative braking that we are going to see in this one hour lecture so energy consumption in braking uh, that we are seeing that is mainly happening in case of electrical uh, sorry mechanical braking so energy consumption in braking happens in mechanical braking braking power and energy on the front and rear wheels it is different because front wheel is using disc brake rear wheel is generally using drum brake brake systems for ev and hev what are the brake system for ev and hev mainly it is using uh, electrical braking and uh, sometimes we are using hybrid braking so in next module module 4 we are going to see the basic structure uh, or uh, block diagram based explanation of ev as well as hev uh, schemes or architecture there we will find that sometime it is electrical braking sometime it is mechanical braking and if too much of braking power is required we are applying electrical and mechanical braking together but one thing you have to understand that electrical braking uh, there is a possibility of energy regeneration mechanical braking it's only energy wastage or energy reduction so this regenerative braking we can find in module number 14 in the book of azani so initial uh, five six lectures are very important from exam point of view towards the end of this uh, 12 lecture uh, slides uh, we are already in the third slide so the last three four slides are uh, graphs and all these things are given but they will not be asked in the exam but yes initial five six slides a uh, question can be asked from this initial five six slides five six means starting from this three up to slide number eight and nine so fundamentals of regenerative braking i have already explained uh, let us see what it is written here one of the most important features of ev hev and fcv is their ability to recover significant amount of braking energy <clears throat> these special vehicles can be controlled to operate as generators to convert the kinetic or potential energy of vehicle mass into electric energy that can be stored in the energy storage and then reused so for uh, ic engine based vehicle or mechanical vehicle this kind of thing is not possible as it is shown ev hev fcv they are only using regenerative braking so these special vehicles can be controlled to operate as regeneration so regeneration mainly happens when the vehicle go downward uh, the front of the vehicle is down and vehicle is going downward that time uh, the output uh, uh, machine that is generally it is motor that acts as a generator so that kinetic energy or potential energy actually it is getting converted um, into electrical energy so motor acts as a generator so input and output port get exchanged uh, and uh, actually the rotation of the vehicle when the vehicle is going downward it's very fast even if we keep the engine off it will go downward that rotation of the tire because of its own uh, weight that actually rotates a, a generator and uh, from the output side and at the input of the uh, generator actually uh, we are getting some kind of uh, electrical energy that is feeding back and it gets stored in the battery so battery i told you it's a high a uh, specific energy device it stores energy and it can give out energy for long period of time a constant uh, kind of energy it can supply for long period of time the braking performance of a vehicle is an important factor uh, in vehicle safety successfully designed braking system quickly reduces the vehicle speed and also maintains vehicle direction controlled by the steering wheel so steering wheel is giving us direction vehicle speed actually is controlled by accelerator decelerator or accelerator and brake speed reduction requires a braking system to be able to supply sufficient braking torque on all wheels so they are actually talking about uh, reduction of torque so reduction of torque can be done in two ways on the wheel first is by applying a, a friction that is done in the mechanical brake in electrical braking this reduction of torque in the wheel actually happens by applying less current or less energy to the motor who is driving the wheels direction control later requires proper braking 
force distribution on all four wheels one very important thing we have to remember that whenever the brake is being pressed uh, inside the car so brake is generally in our control so whenever you are pressing the brake all the four wheels uh, should get the brake force at the same time in that case only proper braking might happen obviously with anti-lock braking system otherwise if there is a timing delay of some brake uh, rotating some brake uh, breaking getting the brake force or some will rotating some will uh, is uh, getting brake those kind of thing that means if there is a asynchronism in uh, the wheel braking in that case there is a big chance that uh, the vehicle will topple that means it will go upside down and accident will happen so the timing control is very much important for braking as well as uh, the torque control that means brake torque generation is also very important thing in case of vehicle in case of hybrid vehicle we find two kinds of braking mechanical and electrical in ev generally we find electrical braking only that is by controlling the current supply to the motor or power supply to the motor which motor the motor who is propelling the four wheels so by controlling the power supply or current supply to the motor we can uh, reduce uh, the vehicle speed by actually reducing the motor speed so that is actually called as braking so generally from the uh, childhood we are having a break in our mind whenever we are saying brake means applying opposition force okay but in case of electrical braking it is not applying opposition force it is not accelerating at all in fact decelerating by applying less current to the driving motor so there is a very big uh, paradigm shift there is a very big fundamental difference that you have to remember in case of electrical brake Braking torque required in vehicle is much larger uh, than the torque produced by an electric motor. So uh, it is like uh, whenever a system is fully in control, whenever a system is fully in running condition, suddenly pushing it into off state, it takes quite a lot of uh, energy. Okay, So when a vehicle is running with full torque and energy mm. to apply brake, okay. In that case, the brake force has to be very high. This is what is told in this black line at the first. So, when braking torque required in vehicle must be much larger than torque produced by electric motor. That means vehicle is running in full swing. In that case, if you want to apply brake torque, dimension of the brake torque has to be very high, especially for heavy braking. Heavy braking means sudden uh, brake you have to apply, and within very short span, within very short range, the vehicle should stop. In EV, HEV, FCV, FCV is actually a fuel cell based vehicle, mechanical friction braking system must coexist and electrical regenerative braking. So in case of EV, HEV, FCV as I told you that two brakes act simultaneously. One is mechanical braking, one is electrical braking. Therefore this is a hybrid braking system. So this is one question uh, we will see in case of uh, next uh, that is fourth module that is what is hybrid braking system. Hybrid braking system we are actually finding in case of hybrid electric vehicles. Uh, in that case we are finding mechanical braking and electrical braking together and together they are generating the brake force. Hybrid propulsion system, hybrid braking system also has various control strategies. Final goal of the regenerative braking. So regenerative braking means vehicle is going downward, uh, power is generated from the wheels and the uh, vehicle is getting charged while it is going downward or whenever the brake is pressed. So final goal of this regenerative braking is number one to ensure the vehicle's braking performance. So that is a sole aim because uh, brake is connected uh, to reduce the acceleration uh, for the vehicle. So first aim is to ensure the vehicle's braking performance. Second goal is ability to recover as much braking energy as possible. So reduction of uh, vehicle's speed, that is the first uh, target for regenerative braking. Second target is regeneration, that means generation of reverse directional energy which will charge the battery of the EV HEV. So here you can find this is the curve for coasting speed. Coasting speed means uh, the speed at which you are going forward. So this is coasting speed, you can find out that as soon as brake is applied, actually the speed of the vehicle is reducing that means this is a deceleration y axis you are finding speed kilometer per hour curve and uh, x axis you are finding it is coasting time so coasting time is increasing so 200 seconds you are finding okay and this is distance in kilometer so uh, how much distance it is covering sometime it is covering distance almost 
uh, two kilometers. So if you are finding there is a bump or something, it is not very hard breaking that you are applying. Maybe you are finding a bumper. You know there is a bumper. So uh, before some time you start slowing your vehicle. So without applying brake also, you can slow down your vehicle just by uh, removing your uh, press from the uh, acceleration. So you are not accelerating anymore. Slowly you are removing your leg or press from the accelerator. That means you are decelerating. You can. This is also another way of braking. So removing your press or leg from accelerator is also actually a braking. Or if there is very hard braking required, that means car has to be stopped immediately, which is not the case shown here. In that case, from far, from maybe half a kilometer, one kilometer, you are slowly removing your press from the accelerator. So this is the distance covered during braking. So this is almost two kilometer, and this is uh, the speed. So speed was around 100 kilometer per hour, and within some 150 seconds, that means two to and half minute, it is coming down to speed zero. So this is gradually cutting off uh, the speed or gradual application of your brake. Significant number of energy is dissipated in the braking because you have to stop the vehicle which was running with very high speed. Hence you have to cut down the speed and significant amount of energy okay, actually actually reverse energy which uh, brings the vehicle to uh, standstill has to be applied to bring the vehicle to standstill. So braking a 1500 that means 1500 kg car vehicle from 100 km to 0 speed dissipates about 0 0.16 kilowatt hour energy. So this kind of, kind of question can be asked in uh, your uh, quiz. So 1500 kg car uh, it was speeding 100 km per hour. From there you are actually coming to uh, 0 speed that means uh, this time this time that is 2 and half hour sorry 2 and half minutes. Okay. Uh, actually it is uh, dissipating that means this brake force actually is 0 0.16 kilowatt hour 1 kilowatt hour means 1 unit of energy for which we pay the electric bill so you are actually dissipating 0 0.16 kilowatt hour half mv square m is the mass v is the uh, velocity okay uh, in a few tens of meters so within uh, almost one one and a half kilometers slowly gradually you are cutting the speed uh, from 100 km per hour to zero in this amount of energy, if this amount of energy is dissipated by coasting uh, and only by drag forces, rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag without braking, the vehicle travel would be 2 km as shown in the uh, figure. That means if you are applying 0 0.16 kilowatt hour okay, energy to uh, in the opposite direction of the vehicle, that means it will stop. Uh, it will stop uh, after applying this energy negative energy it will stop after 2 kilometers but actually for uh, braking you don't want the braking distance to be very big because sometimes uh, suddenly somebody comes in front of your car you want the vehicle to stop immediately braking energy consumed in urban driving so urban driving and uh, village driving they are different whenever you are in urban driving so driving cycles we have talked about in the previous module driving cycles means x axis there is time y axis there is velocity so i have shown such kind of thing in class also so whenever you are in urban driving that means you are driving through a city with lot of brakes and stops they are actually too much of uh, usage of brake we find so when a vehicle is driving in a stop and go pattern in urban areas a significant amount of energy is dissipated by frequent braking that means frequently you are starting stopping and all Successful designing of the hybrid braking system for recovering maximum possible braking energy requires a full understanding of braking behavior. That means here they are talking about electrical braking or regenerative braking and its characteristic with respect to the vehicle speed, braking power, deceleration rate and so on during the typical urban drive cycles. So if you want to understand urban drive cycle you have to see uh, what is the effect of uh, speed change how uh, fast you can do the start stop start stop every time you are stopping actually you are generating some kind of regenerative energy so understanding uh, the vehicle behavior vehicle speed braking power deceleration rate all these things are very much important uh, in case of urban driving typical urban drive cycles so drive cycles i told you x axis is distance y axis is uh, velocity a typical urban drive cycle that are used in this chapter for explanation of uh, regenerative braking this is for actually new york city so there are some standard drive cycles which are available so driving power pd whenever we are driving a vehicle we have seen in module 1 what is actually the power dissipated at the wheels 
of the vehicle so that pd equation is given here so we are assuming that we are driving on a flat road in that case dissipated power will be v by 1000 now uh, because unit is kilowatt so that's why this 1000 is there v is the velocity of the vehicle we are dividing at 1000 because it was actually uh, power generated power required okay for power dissipated so it was watt actually we have divided it by 1000 so it has become kilowatt so what is the equation of pd pd is v divided by 1000 uh, v is velocity of the vehicle average velocity m is the mass g is the gravitational constant fr is the rolling resistance plus half rho a c d a v square so half rho a c d a v square is nothing but the uh, aerodynamic drag which is in the opposite direction of the vehicle so first thing is the rolling resistance opposition second uh, power is the uh, aerodynamic uh, opposition given to the vehicle so we have to actually overcome these two uh, and then we can achieve the velocity v if m delta dv dt so m dv dt is nothing but m into a dv dt is acceleration and delta is i told you it's a, a rotational to linear uh, uh, power conversion uh, constant so actually it is m into a so this m into a is actually the power developed which is actually overcoming this two uh, losses and then it will be attaining the velocity v so uh, PD that is the driving power or dissipated power by the vehicle on the uh, flat road flat road means you are not finding the grading so that mg sin alpha thing is not here that's why we are saying that there is no banking the road is flat so that's why only these two resistances have come that is rolling resistance and aerodynamic resistance so there is no gradient uh, loss here so third term is the uh, power generated first two terms are loss whenever we are overcoming the loss we are generating a velocity v driving power is given by p d v by 1000 m g f r plus half rho a c d a v square uh, a is the front uh, area of a vehicle c d is nothing but the aerodynamic drag constant for every vehicle c d is a constant v is the velocity um, and this is in kilowatt a very important note is given here you can uh, note down these values m is vehicle mass in kg g is the gravitational acceleration 9.81 meter per second square fr is the tire rolling resistance rho is the air mass density remember this value 1.205 kg per meter cube cd is the aerodynamic drag coefficient which is constant for a vehicle a is the frontal area of the vehicle m square okay m square means frontal area is given in meter square v is the vehicle speed in meter per second delta is the rotational inertia factor it does not have any unit dv dt is the acceleration meter per second square and all these things are given you can calculate how much will be the driving power for any vehicle against a certain uh, aerodynamic drag and against a certain rolling resistance now here is the di diagram right side you can find this is a drive cycle this is a urban drive cycle how do you know this is a urban drive cycle because see that x axis is distance y axis is vehicle speed you are finding you have started initially the car you have gone up to a certain uh, velocity maybe second gear or so because your speed is around 50 so second maybe third gear and then suddenly some obstruction comes you have to stop and you, have, you maybe signal comes you are waiting for a certain time then when the signal is cleared again you are increasing the velocity of the uh, vehicle and you are going almost up to 90 kilometer per hour or 85 then again you are finding that there is a signal or maybe some people is crossing the road so then you have entered a very dense uh, situation in the uh, um, urban uh, area so there is start stop start stop kind of thing so every time we are stopping electric vehicle we are actually generating some regenerative energy then again between 800 to 1000 uh, i think x axis is seconds i mentioned it wrong i'm sorry it is not distance x axis is second okay so this is 0 to 1400 seconds that means almost uh, 23 to 24 minutes okay so between 800 to 1000 uh, seconds that means almost uh, 13 to uh, 16 uh, minutes okay again uh, there is a clean patch through which you can drive without stopping so you are finding here also you are not accelerating much because you are finding that speed is going maximum up to around 60 km per hour because you know this part of the city is uh, kind of uh, empty so there is there will not be any traffic but you know after crossing this road there will be a traffic so hence you are not increasing the speed to 80 or 90 so this is actually called as a driving cycle and this urban driving cycle how do you know this urban driving cycle because there is too much of stop go stop go kind of a thing 
okay and below you are finding another curve so this is actually ftp 75 it is american uh, standard uh, driving cycle so whenever we simulate some kind of vehicle in matlab uh, in that case we feed this kind of driving cycles ftp 75 and all to that vehicle and we'll check how the vehicle is performing so vehicle performance means how is its uh, speed is increasing acceleration is increasing or it is decelerating how much is the power uh, dissipated how much is the uh, driving power and all those things how much is the maximum speed all those things we determine uh, from the driving cycle in case of simulation so you are finding here that uh, y axis is energy in kilowatt and you are finding there are two curves so across this whole thing across this whole thing that means almost 1400 seconds that means around 23 minutes okay how is the traction power so this is an integrated curve this is the traction power that means total this much power is dissipated for traction traction means how to take the vehicle forward and below you are finding how is how much power is used for braking okay so this is braking power this is traction power and you are finding that integrating the pd equation over driving time so these are all driving energy and all those things if you are integrating over time you are getting actually total energy so you are integrating actually pd over driving time you are finding traction energy and braking energy for a typical passenger car with the parameters like m f r c d a l uh, all these things we have seen wheelbase l l is wheelbase that means different between the center of front wheel and back wheel so l a is the distance from gravity center to the front wheel center that means this is l a is actually i think a uh, uh, distance okay l is also a distance uh, h g is the height of the gravity center that means how where is that uh, center of gravity height from the uh, wheel base so that is the distance for ftp 75 urban drive cycle study shows that braking energy in typical urban areas may reach up to 34 percent or more uh, of the total traction energy in large cities like new york it may go up to 80 percent okay so we are finding that uh, sometimes for very big cities where stop go stop go things are going uh, we may have to lose 80 percent of energy Okay, in this uh, driving cycle, whatever we are saying, 34% uh, of the energy you are losing for braking. Okay, but for big cities where traffic jam is more, we might have to loss almost 80% of the vehicle energy. That means loss ratio is very high. So forces acting on vehicle during braking, whenever the vehicle is uh, taking a brake, that means you are reducing the acceleration, what are the parameters? So you can find here, this is the height Hg. Uh, this point is actually the center of gravity and this is the uh, ground point okay because you can find the tires are touching here this is a ground point hg and la and lb la is from center of gravity in the x direction uh, the wheel center what is the distance from center of gravity x axis uh, to the rear wheel how much is the distance that is lb la plus lb is equal to actually l this is actually the wheel base distance between front wheel and back wheel so what are the parameters that decide uh, the braking of a vehicle first thing is mass very important thing because you can find if the vehicle uh, is actually uh, taken some four or five people who are sitting inside the vehicle in that case it cannot accelerate much even if it is trying to accelerate much it will be consuming more amount of petrol that is there so mass of the vehicle not only vehicle vehicle plus object plus passengers together is actually is a very big parameter who guides the braking so more is the mass more will be inertia uh, to put the or to bring the vehicle into rest in that case more amount of energy will be required so more is the mass more will be the energy required uh, to bring the vehicle into rest rolling resistance fr if the road is very smooth in that case we have to uh, generate more braking energy to bring the vehicle into rest so fr means rolling resistance more is the rolling resistance lesser will be the uh, braking uh, friction energy generated and less is the fr in that case more braking energy we have to generate aerodynamic drag coefficient cd uh, if the aerodynamic drag is very high from the beginning we will require less uh, brake force to bring the vehicle to rest front area this is actually proportional to uh, this aerodynamic drag okay wheel base l uh, relation is there between the distance between two wheels and brake a distance from gravity center uh, to the front wheel of the uh, uh, center that means uh, this distance la lb and hg all these things are very important gravity center height so all these are 
mainly breaking parameters with their units all these things are given I think up till this point uh, there is no doubt because all the things were pretty clear we have seen all these details previously uh, now what we are going to see is uh, the braking energy versus vehicle speed so this is a graph and these are very small 5 marks question can be asked on this kind of topics so braking energy versus vehicle speed that means uh, x axis if you see so it is a discrete kind of uh, graph you are finding uh, x axis is a vehicle speed so there are different vehicle speed 0 km per hour, 10 km per hour, 20 km, 30, 40, 50, 60, up to 100 km per hour. And uh, how much is the uh, braking energy percentage uh, distribution over the vehicle speed? So, braking energy distribution over vehicle speed in a typical urban cycle is actually useful information for the design and control of a regenerative brake system. So, this kind of graph actually will help us uh, to go for the uh, policy for regenerative brake system. So, in the speed range in which uh, the braking energy is most dissipated, uh, that we are going to find out. That means uh, here you are finding that uh, around 30. Okay, so if the vehicle is uh, 30 kilometer per hour, at that time braking energy percentage distribution is around uh, here. If you just connect it, you are finding it's around 15 to 16 percent. Let's take it to be 16 percent. Okay, so in the speed range in which the braking energy is most dissipated, the operating efficiency of the electric motor functioning as a generator uh, may be most concerned. So, what we are finding is actually whenever the vehicle speed is around 30 km per hour, at that time you will be finding that most of the uh, energy is dissipated for braking. Okay, so the operating efficiency of the electric motor functioning as a generator uh, may be of most concern. So, what actually you are finding is uh, in this case uh, that uh, the other speed ranges that means if you are finding both sides of this 30 so here actually it is a reduction in the dissipated energy in the right side it is the reduction in the dissipated energy and whenever uh, the uh, vehicle speeds are very high that means in the range of 60 70 80 and all those things what you are finding is in this case uh, braking energy is not dissipated much because you are finding that dissipation of energy percentage okay is very less in this case that means whenever the vehicle is in 30 40 uh, km per hour range at that time uh, maximum energy is wasted for braking okay that means uh, if you are driving a vehicle with 30 or 40 km uh, per hour uh, speed at that time maximum amount of energy is wasted uh, for braking so, towards the very low range also you are finding comparatively percent wise uh, there is considerable amount of uh, wastage of energy for braking. But when the vehicle is very high speed because uh, a very practical thing you can understand here is whenever the vehicle is in very high speed, very high speed means actually we know that uh, there is no obstacle in the road, uh, the road is condition is good, bumpers are not there. So, generally in such cases we apply very less amount of brake. If you see the drive cycle in the previous uh, uh, this uh, slide, whenever you are in this kind of thing that means somewhere around 180 up to uh, this uh, 280 uh, seconds, okay, that means almost 3 up to 5 seconds, uh, you are finding this is a long stretch where the vehicle has taken uh, speed almost up to 80 to 85 km per hour. That means in this thing braking energy will be very less. okay because speed is very high okay, again you are finding here between this uh, around 750 up to uh, 1100 or maybe 1000 uh, uh, seconds what you are finding is in this case uh, speed is around 60 km per hour though what is the braking here braking is very less again here you are finding speed is very high 85 and all speed is very less here you are finding uh, sorry uh, speed is 85 braking is very less here you are finding uh, speed is high around 45 50 braking is less so exactly the same things they are saying uh, and you are finding here the speed is less speed is around uh, 20 25 and all okay here also speed is less braking is more okay so what we find here actually from this graph we have to understand is whenever we are finding that uh, which are the uh, speeds at which generally the uh, braking happens more or braking energy gets dissipated more or most of the uh, braking energy is wasted. This is actually in the lower side from 
30 to 40 km per hour that means from 0 to 40 km per hour we are wasting a lot of energy in braking because we are not able to accelerate the vehicle to very high speed when you know road condition is good and everything else is very good then we can accelerate the vehicle to 50 60 70 80 90 less amount of brake is put in that case dissipation of brake energy is comparatively a lot less so in other speed ranges that means uh, regenerative braking may be abundant uh, with no significant compromise on the energy recovered so towards high uh, speed when the vehicle is at very high speed and it is going to the downward slope huge amount of regenerative braking is produced in this uh, higher uh, speed ranges that is what they are saying in the higher speed range so here they are saying in the lower speed range uh, braking energy will be dissipated more percentage uh, but in the higher energy higher uh, speed ranges regenerative braking may be abundant with no significant compromise on energy recovered abundant means a uh, huge okay uh, figure shows braking energy distribution over uh, vehicle speed while driving okay so figure shows the braking energy distribution over a vehicle speed while driving that means lower speed mm, higher is the dissipated energy in braking and higher is the speed lower is the dissipated energy for braking so very simply saying this graph says that higher is the speed lower will be the braking energy wasted Braking power versus vehicle speed profiles naturally match the power speed characteristic of the motor. In that the power is proportional to the speed from zero speed to the base speed constant torque and is constant beyond the base speed. So you can say that this 3040, this 3040 is actually the base speed for the uh, you can say um, that is gear 1 or gear 2. So as soon as long as you are not reaching the base speed in that case actually your torque is constant but you cannot increase the speed much okay uh, and after that after the base speed base speed means uh, the speed up to which your initial torque is constant after the base speed whenever you are increasing the speed of the vehicle in that case there is a less chance of braking and in that case there is a huge chance of producing a regenerative braking so if i give you this graph and ask you which is the generation in which actually you will be uh, getting more uh, a regeneration so this is in the higher range okay like that uh, from zero to the base speed constant torque and is constant beyond the base speed thus electric motor do not uh, need a special design and control for regenerating braking purpose because you are finding that uh, in this case uh, dissipation will be less generation will be more uh, of the electric energy braking energy dissipated over uh, speed range below given speed so figure shows the braking energy dissipated in a speed range that is less than a given speed now these two figures indicate that only 10 percent of the total braking energy is dissipated in the speed range below 15 kilometers so you are finding here that is uh, below 15 kilometer per hour you are finding only 10 percent of the braking energy is dissipated in the speed range below 15 table below shows the braking energy dissipated in the speed range below 15 km per hour while driving in the other typical urban drive cycles that means if you if your uh, speed is less okay so x axis is nothing but speed you are finding if the speed is less at the time we don't think of uh, a regenerative braking much okay uh, so here they are saying that if you see ftp 75 urban in that case braking energy is 10.97 LA 92 these are actually the different drive cycles in that case braking energy is 5.51 US 06 3.27 so these are all uh, kilometer per hour in percentage okay so you are finding that for different drive cycles you are finding this much is the braking energy uh, produced by each of the things so generally it is 10 percent in this case so these are the graphs I am not going to ask in the exam just you understand what are the characteristics this is another characteristic which is saying uh, braking energy versus braking power so power is nothing but energy per time so braking power in kilowatt and x axis braking energy percentage in braking power range uh, greater than the power on x axis so braking energy versus braking power is another important thing understanding braking energy versus braking power in a typical drive cycle is very helpful in the power capacitor design on electric motor drive and onboard energy storage so that they can recover most of the braking energy without oversized design so sizing uh, the battery sizing the whole uh, electrical and electronic things is a very important thing unnecessarily we should not put very big motor inside a vehicle uh, 
because whatever is the maximum rating uh, of the vehicle accordingly we have to design a motor which will be uh, running the vehicle so in this case you are finding that the battery braking percentage in the range that is greater than the power shown in the horizontal axis so what we are finding is from 0 up to 14.4 kilowatts so around 15 percent of the total braking energy is dissipated in a braking power range greater than 14.4 uh, kilowatts so if you are saying that um, above more than 14.4 kilowatts so whenever you are increasing the power of the vehicle to too much actually you are dissipating some of the braking energy but from 0 to 14.4 kilowatt that means this is a lower power range you are actually saving this energy so this result implies that 15 kilowatt electric uh, motor can recover up to 85 percent of the total braking energy so this is the region uh, which are actually uh, recovered uh, through regenerative braking that means still you are going so this for a, a typical car they have given not for every car this is the standard graph uh, figure shows the braking simulation results for a, uh, a car while driving in a urban driving cycle around 15 percent of the total brake energy is dissipated in a braking power range greater than 14.4 kilowatt so you are finding that whenever the braking power is 14.4 kilowatt greater than that this power is actually dissipated as the uh, braking and this power whenever your braking power is less than 14.4 this much power almost 85 percent of the braking power is actually recovered by using uh, regenerative braking so figure shows results for a urban drive cycle which also indicates the braking power range in which 85 percent of the total braking uh, energy is uh, dissipated these data are good indicators uh, of the power capacity of the electric motor and onboard energy storage from a braking point of view okay so uh, you can say that 85 percent of the braking power in drive cycle uh, implies that 15 kilowatt electric motor can recover about 85 percent of the total braking energy uh, which can be used a very important thing so another thing another graph you are finding here is uh, braking energy on front and rear axles okay so front tire and rear tire what is the difference so this is a graph you can see this is a deceleration rate so deceleration rate is increasing deceleration rate is increasing means here actually the vehicle stops so it was zero time you have applied the brake and after around uh, 0.12 or 0.13 seconds actually the vehicle stops so braking, braking energy dissipated in various vehicle deceleration rate so deceleration means opposite of acceleration so deceleration is increasing means actually vehicle is stopping so vehicle stops here so you have applied the brake here zero the brake has started working at this point and after 0.12 seconds or so the vehicle stops so how exactly the power is dissipated so y axis you are finding this is a braking energy in deceleration a range of uh, less than uh, the given value on horizontal axis okay so this is increasing in the brake power you are finding that or braking energy i'm sorry not power this is energy so around 100 units of energy is actually given uh, or in between 100 and 110 okay to bring the vehicle to rest so this is actually called as a dissipated energy this area under this curve is actually called as a dissipated energy to bring the vehicle to the rest so the braking performance for uh, passenger cars require the braking force distribution in the front and rear axle uh, to be below the i curve so this is the curve which is called as i curve so whatever is the area under this curve this is actually the uh, energy dissipated in the front and rear axles the requirement implies that uh, most of the braking force is applied on the front axle so brake force is mainly applied to the front axle consequently regenerative braking on the uh, front axle is better than the rear axle so front axle rear axle there are two things uh, front axle is better for braking front axle is better for regenerative braking however the other kinds of vehicles such as trucks rear axle may be better so you are finding that maximum deceleration rate uh, maximum deceleration rate rate of deceleration that means again meter per second okay uh, meter per second square actually it is uh, how the uh, deceleration happening with respect to time and you are finding that different drive cycles are having different deceleration rates and y axis is percentage braking energy consumed in deceleration of less than 0.15 g so here you are finding in ftp urban huge amount of uh, braking energy is consumed 
because i have told you that in urban cycle uh, braking happens very frequently that's why braking energy consumed is high la92 us06 uh, 69 all these things are maybe highway drive cycles okay so you can search about it la92 us06 uh, new york all these things are actually highway drive cycles that's why their braking is less that's why braking energy consumed will be less in this case and ec15 again it is like this urban cycle here more amount of braking will happen and more amount of braking energy will be consumed in this case so i think this is the last slide and this slide is actually talking about uh, brake system for electric vehicle hybrid electric vehicle and fuel cell based vehicle what it says is uh, regenerative braking in ev hev and fcb introduces slight complexity to the braking system design uh, two basic question arises number one how to distribute the total required braking forces among regenerative braking and frictional braking to recover as much as energy uh, possible that means uh, how much should be the electrical braking because whenever electrical braking is happening there only we can uh, regenerate some of the energy and take it back so if let's say x amount of braking energy is required to bring the car into rest or into halt in that case what will be the percentage of mechanical braking and what will be the percentage of electrical braking so more is the electrical braking in that case more will be regenerative braking and regeneration of energy so this distribution of percentage uh, from the required uh, total braking force this is a calculation actually in vehicle there is a ecu electro uh, electronic control unit that actually will uh, calculate that whatever is the uh, uh, brake force required or brake energy required how much of that should be produced by mechanical how much of that should be produced by electrical so in fourth module whenever we are going to study uh, there are different uh, PPS control strategies okay so PPS is peaking power source Picking power source means a vehicle is going with uh, normal driving and all. This is called as a kind of a steady state power source. Whenever there is a acceleration required, whenever the vehicle is going through the hill and uh, accelerating very fast at it, in those cases, a uh, picking power source or bumper source come into picture. So whenever the vehicle is being run with bumper source at that time, how to apply brake and uh, how the regenerative brake uh, uh, action occurs uh, electrical brake, mechanical brake, all those things will be see in case of electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle. So question number one, I told you in case of EV, HEV, FCV, question number one is how to decide how much percent of brake would be electrical brake and how much of the brake would be mechanical brake. Because mechanical brake gives only loss, electrical brake gives regeneration and we can save energy, okay, we can generate energy, both are kind of the same thing. Second question is how to distribute the total braking force on the front and rear axles to achieve stable braking performance. So stability is a very important thing in case of braking because you have seen anti-lock braking system. Uh, if the anti-lock braking system is not there and without that suddenly you try to bring all the vehicle into a rest by pressing uh, uh, brake and uh, halting actually all the four wheels at the same time. There is a big chance that this car will skid and it will get toppled. Okay, so anti-lock braking system stops this toppling of the vehicle. So how to distribute the total braking force on the front and rear axles to achieve stable braking performance without uh, there is an accident or without the car getting toppled. Usually regenerative braking is effective only for the drive axle that is the front axle for the passenger cars. Electric motor must be controlled to produce the proper amount of braking force to recover as much as braking energy as possible. So this is the second uh, question that is how to distribute the total braking forces on the front and rear axle so there are actually two questions first question is uh, how to define the percentage of electrical braking and mechanical braking second question is uh, how to distribute the total braking force on front axle and rear axle for stable performance stable performance without any ac accident during uh, braking so total front axle is uh, for the regenerative braking and that gives uh, better regeneration in case of EV, HEV and FCV. So total braking force must be sufficient to meet the vehicle deceleration commanded by the driver. That means whenever uh, the driver is actually pressing the brake at the time, he wants that within maybe one meter or one and a half meter the vehicle should come to rest. 
so very short time the ecu is having to decide uh, how much of mechanical force how much of electrical force to be generated for braking and accordingly it should generate that force and vehicle should come to rest this is actually for the safety of the uh, traffic as well as safety of the driver itself two configuration of hybrid brake systems are discussed next with their corresponding design and control principle one is parallel hybrid brake system another is a uh, series hybrid brake system we will see a uh, parallel hybrid brake system has a simple structure and control and retains all the major components of conventional brakes other one is fully controlled hybrid brake system so one is parallel hybrid brake system another is fully controlled hybrid brake system which can fully control the braking force for individual wheels thus greatly enhancing the vehicle's braking performance on the uh, types of roads so whenever we are saying parallel hybrid brake system it is not uh for each wheel separate braking system is arranged no it is not that kind of thing it is parallel hybrid brake system that means the combination of electrical brake and mechanical brake on the other hand the other fully controlled uh, other brake system is fully controlled hybrid brake system in which uh, each individual wheel is controlled separately so it is called it's also called as a in wheel drive in wheel drive means every uh, tire can be or every wheel can be uh, controlled for speed as well as acceleration separately so that is a very high end of uh, braking so in this case it will enhance the vehicle's braking performance on all types of roads so this actually finishes uh, the basic understanding of uh, regenerative braking next what we are going to see is uh, battery management system so in that case i'm not going to design a uh, slide okay so the battery management system will be uh, taught from a pdf so i will uh, share that pdf with you as well so this is the 20th lecture of the uh, course and uh, i stop here today uh, next class that is battery management system will be the last class that is lecture number 21 uh, this will be the last class for module number 3 okay so we are going to uh, finish the module number 3 with lecture number 21 which will be a special study of battery management system i stop here thank you